One of the most iconic warplanes, the Spitfire, used extensively during the Second World War, is set to begin the longest flight around the world. It'll stop over in India as well. Remember, the Indian Air Force used to at one stage fly the Spitfire as well. Now, two British pilots are determined to change history and will fly a newly restored original Mark 9 Spitfire, aptly named the Silver Spitfire, around the world uh, uh, in, in what is an incredible first. Joining us now from London, one of the pilots on this incredible mission, Steve Boltby Brooks, who was the first man to fly pole to pole in a helicopter as well. Steve, good to speak to you. Uh, Hello. Just, it's, we'll, we'll talk about the mission, but I, I'm a big fan of the Spitfire. It was a labor of love, wasn't it? Restoring a plane which hasn't flown for so long. Oh, it was amazing. They are the most beautiful planes. They're made of 80,000 rivets. And every single rivet we had to drill out. And with the help of IWC, uh, who are sponsoring the expedition, we uh, rebuilt the plane painstakingly, piece by piece. Uh, and it's taken two years, 15 people full time, but it's now up and flying again. And uh, the, this particular Spitfire had flown more than 50 missions, right, during the Second World War? It, it did fly more than 50, 51 missions in the Second World War. And uh, the expedition itself, it's tremendously challenging. Um, what are some of the biggest concerns or challenges you face as you fly around the world? Um, obviously, these, they, this was built as an interceptor, so it wasn't built for range. And uh, what we want to do is the Spitfire stands for so much for so many people, especially India, um, who, who uh, flew these machines for years and years and it and spitfire somehow stands for hope and freedom and 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 everything that's wonderful about humanity so our goal is to come and see you guys and come and see the rest of the world uh, who don't often get to see uh, one of these things flying in real life and we're very much looking forward to coming and sharing the experience with you uh, and letting people in india see this thing flying hear it in the air and uh, feel the magic of the whole thing Hearing a Spitfire in the air, uh, you said it in your own words, that's, that's something, isn't it? Uh, the, the, that fabulous sound of, of the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. Uh, what, does that, what does that mean to you as a pilot, just the sound of the Spitfire in the air? Well, you, you, you've nailed it. it it's the 27-litre engine. It's the largest petrol engine ever built. And for some reason, it has a roar and a depth to it that sounds like nothing else man ever made. And, and we are looking at one of the most beautiful and iconic uh, things that man ever did create. And it's such a big part of all of our history. And, and our, our, our desire is to bring that to you and to other people in the world and, and, and let you enjoy it too. It's a silver Spitfire. Uh, we've seen many P-51 Mustangs of the US Air Force beautifully uh, in, in, in their original sort of silver color. But you, you're flying us a silver Spitfire. Is that very rare? Oh, well, it's unusual, and we're, we're not. We're not. We've taken away the military markings. We've taken away the guns because that's not what we're about. We're about the precision, and, and a bit like a bit like a beautiful watch. It's about the perfect precision of this instrument, and and it, it is so beautiful to look at. It's the Everest of all aeroplanes, and uh, we're, so we're about presenting that side. It is indeed. So what would be the most challenging part uh, of, of the round the world expedition? I assume uh, flying across the Atlantic, right? Uh, the Atlantic possibly is two bits. We've got to go across up through Iceland, Greenland, across the top of the Atlantic. And then we've got to come up through Alaska and into Russia and down to Japan. Uh, and so those are two uh, tricky parts. And then uh, across Asia and the monsoons, understanding the monsoons as we come across Myanmar and Bangladesh into India, that's certainly a, an area that's got our attention. No, absolutely. Uh, flying in, in these conditions, difficult at the best of times. India flew uh, the Spitfire in its trainer after right to the 50s is what uh, I was reading about earlier today. So we have a fantastic association with this aircraft, also the Hawker Hurricane. So in a sense, this has been an integral part of the Indian Air Force. Uh, and, and therefore, this visit is important from an Indian standpoint as well. That, that's very much the case, yes, and, and, and we are aware of that. that. That's something that comes across to us. When you say Spitfire, the British obviously are very keen on the Spitfire because it changed our history, but it changed your history as well. 
and uh, and so sharing that is what this is all about all right well steve uh, it's going to be an incredible incredible expedition for you and for the spitfire you're going to encounter all sorts of challenges but as somebody who's flown pole to pole in a helicopter i i would assume you know what exactly you're up against and we can't wait to see the spitfire here in india thank you very much for speaking to ndtv thank you very much we look forward to seeing you